Hello everybody, it's Sephiroth 4 for another episode of Final Fantasy X HD. Uh, the reason why we're over here, this is the screen that meets you. First of all, minor spoilers, don't look. <laughs> this is the screen that uh, greets you when you start up the uh, HD remaster. I just want to talk about a few things before we head into the game. Uh, you have the main game here. You have Eternal Calm, which is a uh, essentially a bridge, a video that's a bridge between 10 and 10.2 that they added in for, well, this release for later stuff. They made this a lot later. Uh, they have Last Mission, which is kind of a after, I think it's, I think it's playable? I haven't gotten to it yet on my own time, uh, but it takes place after 10.2. Uh, there's also credits and bonus audio and additional credits. The bonus audio is a uh, audio drama that takes place after 10-2 as well, I believe. And it's interesting. I don't know if it's entirely necessary, but it's interesting. But today, we're gonna jump into our game and see the uh, loading screen here that would normally greet you on the PlayStation 2 version while we talk about special editions. So, <laughs> in uh, the various releases on the PlayStation, right now, or well, as of this episode, it's out in Japan, but next week, next Tuesday, as of recording this, uh, we're just gonna skip, skip through this because we've seen this twice already. Um, yeah, this is the, the screen you'd get Although I think there's one difference. But anyway, um, as of as of uh, Tuesday, I guess um, this game is going to be on the PlayStation, uh, on the Xbox One and Switch. Uh, it's also on Steam, as I said. But originally, it was only released on the PlayStation Three and Vita, and then later on the PlayStation Four. The PlayStation 3 release had a collector's edition that came out, which was really cool uh, that I got. That came with... things were like in a book-sized uh, case. It was very oddly shaped for a collector's edition. I guess we're gonna just let this loop while I talk. And it came with a whole bunch of really cool concept art. Um, some of which I can show you, some of which are really spoilery for both games. Um, as well as a whole bunch of, uh, like, poster-sized pictures of, like, scenes from the game and, like, uh, official art, essentially, uh, that were just really nice, actually. I'm looking at it right now as I'm talking to you, so I know what I'm talking about. Uh, it also had the game case, uh, the game in the case, which was important. <laughs> um, but the thing that attracted me the most is uh, it came with a Blu-ray disc of the official HD remaster soundtrack. And it's not one of those sampler discs that they give you most of the time these days, nah. <laughs> this is the full soundtrack of, of Final Fantasy X, with a smattering of X-2. I don't know if that's because 10.2 is mostly just reused music and is only a few new things or they just didn't want to put it on or something, but the most important thing is that it is Final Fantasy X. The cover itself has art by Yoshitaka Amano, which we'll get to, but it was a very nice uh, collector's edition. It was not too much more money. Uh, the only thing is I, th I feel like in Japan pan it came with the Vita version. I don't think it came with the Vita version here. I think I had to buy it separately. But um, the uh, the Vita version wasn't too expensive and it's actually really convenient to play. Uh, meanwhile, when it came out on the PlayStation 4, it came out as the limited edition. And uh, <laughs> I had to buy that too because of, well, I mean, I'm a fan, but also it came with uh, art <laughs> because I love art. It, the what came with the PlayStation 4 edition, I would not say is as good as the PlayStation 3, but it came with a desktop calendar, and this wasn't just any desktop calendar. 
each month, and this is you know from the the uh, the, the year of uh, 2015 to 16, so it's very out of date now. But each month came with illustrations by Yoshitaka Amano, who did a lot of the early Final Fantasy art. Uh, it doesn't really do much these days, but uh, just it's very cool seeing the Amano style for Final Fantasy X, which people you you just don't see. Like you see that more with like six and four i would say i would say you see that the most but um it is a very very unique style and all of the pictures uh for each month uh are like postcard size and they can actually be removed from the calendar and uh placed somewhere but i'm not gonna be doing that but anyway the best feature i would say that came with the hd remaster is the data transfer which lets you cross save between the PlayStation 3, the Vita, and the PS4 version, which, I mean, the fact that they have crossplay between PS3 and Vita when it came out was fantastic, because if you had to do grinding or do some stupid missions that it's hard to do on a controller or hard to do on the Vita, you know, and it's easier for you to do on the other system, that's great, but the fact that they had it go between the PS4 also, because it's all connected to the PlayStation Network, is great. I feel like in the original version, there was a... Like a, a help number or something. I, I just have it in the back of my mind that the that the title screen here had like a, a helpline you can call to um for game for the game. I'm gonna look that up on my own time and 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 see. I have to pull out my uh, PlayStation 2. But um yeah, this is pretty much what the screen looked like when you load up the game, and it didn't. It had like regular save files as opposed to this, but um, it's just cool what they changed, what they kept. I'm sorry if you hear Blender in the background. Uh, but let's, let's load ourselves up some save data and get on to, uh, the game itself. Last time on Final Fantasy X. Ah, this music. We, uh, got to Besaid Village after meeting Waka and fancy shenanigans happened. This guy looks like Wedge. I mean, he probably is. He looks like Wedge from... FF7. I'm pretty sure that's entirely uh, intended, and I need to look it up right now to see if that's actually the character wedge in the game. The surprise, this game has a Biggs and a wedge. <laughs> uh, see, there's Biggs. I don't think it is him. No, wedge is it. Right, right, right. Wedge is a different character. Oh, that's too bad. He he looks like <laughs> he looks like Wedge from F7. Anyway, um, my favorite is Lord of Holland. Yeah, spitting image of my old hubby. <laughs> um, we were told to go pay our respects at the temple over here while Waka kind of did stuff. So you know what? Let's go do that. We spent enough time talking in this episode. Let's just let's just go straight for the temple. Uh, there's a few treasures here and there that we've already found around the town. I don't think there's anything over here. I'm trying to remember what the purpose of them putting this here. There's... Let me just tell you, there's we're, we're having events here. Make sure you get everything now because uh, this is actually going to be one of the harder spots to come back to later. But anyway, let's check out our first temple. I like that the hymn is different for each temple. It was then, standing in that place. I began to realize how different this world was from my own. Oh man. I didn't notice those big statues before, even though the game, like, literally shows them to you. Wow, okay. I mean, that's because the... normal... thing here doesn't doesn't point them out afterwards, but the normal camera angle. Oh, okay, Ten those... Years have passed since Lord Braska became High Summoner. 
Hi. And finally, we receive a statue for our temple. That's cool. Oh, well, what's a high summoner? <gasps> what? <laughs> Uh, I I got too close to Sin's uh, toxin. They're like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it was funny hearing myself make the same excuse over and over. Funny, and a little sad. That's me every the day. The summoners are practitioners of a sacred art, sworn to protect the people of Yevon. Only a chosen few become summoners, who call forth entities of great power, the Aeons. The Aeons hear our prayers Why and they come have the down fire to on his chest? They are the blessing of Yevon. So what he meant... ...was that we should respect some kind of great men, or something like that, I figured. I, I love... I love his narration in this game. It just... it makes, like, the single-player... Even the multiplayer areas, but like this, the part where you're alone, it makes it a little bit more tolerable. It makes him more of a human character. Don't bother people when they're praying, it's against the teachings! I'm sorry, Sin's Toxin. I was just attacked by Sin when I was a little kid, yeah? The village was burned to ashes, I solved nightmares that day. Oh, by the way, if you know me, like, outside the videos, and I say yeah after everything, it's because of this game. Ma mainly because of Waka. So, I apologize. It's Waka's fault. Hi, Summer Gandalf. I thought they said Gandalf. Gandalf, give us your blessing watch over my family. My favorite's Lord of Holland. Oh, okay, yeah, I remember Lord of Holland. Uh, what's in here? <gasps> Books. Look at these, look at these nice little rendered areas. They're little weird text and everything. Man. Very creepy. Hello. Hello. Even searching the scriptures of Yevon, I found no cure for sin's toxin. May the blessing of Yevon guide your health, friend. Guide you to help. Yeah. Uh. Oh well. That's yeah, just too bad, isn't it? Hmm. Pray hard, and the toxin will surely release its grip on you. Cool. Who are you? You look s familiar. Statue's guidance. I'm sure our apprentice is doing fine. Our apprentice? Well, anyway, let's go up here. Only the sworn guardians may approach the cloister of trials. Oh, this is apparently we're playing Pokemon now. Hey, hey, Wedge. Not, or should I say, not Wedge. Big operations coming up. Are you a crusader? Oh, that's neat. That makes sense, actually. Okay, well that was cool. Can we do anything, uh... No. Alright, so that was fun. Said hi at the temple, got pushed around by people. Uh, let's go back to Waka, who's somewhere around here. Is this Waka's tent? Yay! Sorry man, no time for lunch yet. Take a nap. You look pushed. Sure. Thanks. Wow, we actually go in the bed. Look at that. It's a character sleeping in an RPG. Uh-oh. You could at least go see how they are doing. Oh. <laughs> you can't like... interfere. It's a rule. But it's been nearly... It's been... Apparently something's going on without me. But it's been nearly. That's been. It's been nearly a day already. Perhaps you could go look for us. People are searching for him now. Hmm. Thank you. Why is that voice from? Oh, is that? Who cares whether he comes back hmm. or not? <laughs> but he might die. Fine, let him. Do you... Do you hate him so? Pretty sure she's another voice in this game. But then if again, does, a few people are. You'll never be able to tell him how much you hate him. Wow, okay. Actually, um, John DiMaggio voices another one of our party members. Which I just realized, like, between recordings. 
We haven't seen them yet, obviously, because it's not James Arnold Taylor here. Anyway, walk is gone. Uh, it was pointed out that this uh, song is actually, uh, like the, the music here, is actually like a more acoustic, tropical version of a really important song later in the game. I mean, this is also playing on the choose your game screen, so yeah. <laughs> it's little touches like this, and it makes sense given what Besaid is. Is so something wrong? The summoner hasn't returned from the trial. Is that bad? Eh? Well, apprentice summoner, really. Ah. There's a room in there called the Cloister of Trials. Beyond Pokemon is where the again. apprentice summoner prays. Who's the if trial the captain? Is heard, the apprentice becomes a fully fledged summoner. Remember? Sure. Uh, so someone is in there somewhere and they haven't come back out. Right, I got it. A day's already gone by. Is it particularly dangerous in there? Sometimes, yes. Why don't you go in and help? There's already guardians lie, in there. By the way. Besides, it's forbidden. Hey. Hey, but what if something happens? What if the summoner dies? The precepts must be obeyed. Like I care. <laughs> I I have sins talks and I do what I want. This wasn't such a good idea after all. And now it's time for music. Boom 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 boom. Cloister of Trials. Those who seek to learn of Yevon's secret arts are tested by the Cloister of Trials. Find the right way and you'll be taken to the Chamber of the Faith. Examine objects with X to open the way. So, yeah, you got puzzle segments here, which is actually interesting for Final Fantasy, really. A strange glyph glows. You're, the, the glyphs are going to be the main part of the trials. The puzzles in the trials aren't particularly hard, but... Each trial has a secret, specifically a secret treasure that you can find that sometimes makes sense and sometimes doesn't. If you miss it, you're not going to be able to unlock something later. And if you miss the one in Besaid, you're going to be sorry. <laughs> Take it from me. Anyway, let's listen to this music for a little. You must use a sphere to go any further. Glyph spheres open the way to the chamber of the faith. Destruction spheres open the way to the hidden treasures. It seems a besaid sphere is also necessary. Is that materia or something? Remove the glyph sphere. You can only carry one sphere at a time. Uh. So I was. One of my other Let's Plays, I'm just trying to remember now, I mentioned that it, the music sounded like this in one of the areas. And for the life of me, I can't remember what game it was. It'll come to me. But anyway, uh, the door's open, so this doesn't actually need to be in there anymore. Yeah, you have to remember little things like that. It's not going to close behind you. I like that they set up little lights in the corners here. You see a sphere-shaped recess. Let's, does the glyph sphere doesn't do anything here? Oh, bye. Hmm. What's in here? A destruction sphere. Hmm. Now, I think we want to take this... See, the destruction sphere, as it says, opens the way up to hidden treasure. I th think you put it back over here? I'm not sure, actually. No, okay, that's just the starting area. So yeah, we're gonna have to remember to put this somewhere, though. The destruction sphere is... fun. <laughs> uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. So, down here we have... Oh, let's put this down first. Yeah, 
that's that's just kind of a placeholder for now. Let's touch the symbols. Come on, come on, come on, come on now. Touch the symbols. Can't you see? For I am not a thimble. That's the that doesn't make any sense. All right, so in here, look at this fancy lines and everything. I always like this room. I found a besaid sphere. So the sphere of the temple, in this case it's Besaid, um, so the sphere of the temple always is what's going to unlock the way forward. I'm just going to stick this here for now. I don't think it does anything in there. But it frees up our hands so we can take the destruction sphere out over here and stick it in here. Yeah, we get a secret treasure. Again, you want to find and get all of these treasures because it unlocks something really good later. And we also get a Rod of Wisdom. You can obtain hidden items by using Destruction Spheres. Thank you for letting us know afterwards. Uh, I like that Wog is in our party. Um, it can't actually equip anything, which is hilarious. Uh, but... Right now, yeah, we have the Rod of Wisdom there, which none of us can use, but it will be useful. Now let's go get our, get back the uh, Sayed Sphere. And put it in here. Move the pedestal, yeah. Move in properly, then just stand on the shiny shiny. Thank you. Bound. So you just have to walk into it, you don't have to press buttons or anything. Just move it into the center of the floor and it will drop down. Hey, it's gotten into you. Hey, it's okay. Only summoners, apprentice summoners, and their guardians can enter here. Mm. It's a tradition. Very important. So make sure that you so do the destruction you? things before yeah. you I'm do a this. A guardian? Because this cutscene had lets you head out, and then you go, you don't come back. <laughs> whoa, whoa, ah! Someone has gone on a pilgrimage to pray at every temple in Spira. Guardians protect them. The guardian's in there now. One of them's got a short fuse, and who knows what the other's thinking. Well, now that we come this far, might as well go all the way. Hey, we did the right thing, apparently. What are you doing here? Didn't think we'd be able to handle it. Uh. No, it's, uh, it's just... See, a giant she gets tiger easy. panther thing. <laughs> Is the summoner all right? Who the heck are you? Who are you? <laughs> I love how strangely everyone is dressed. That's just, it's fun. I think I think that uh, the woman there gets the most flack out of everyone, though. We'll see why as soon as we get a good shot. <laughs> Belts. I have become a summoner. 
So many belts. Man, was I surprised. And here I was thinking summoners were all old geezers. Look at all those belts. Sorry, anyway, she, she, <laughs> for some reason she decided that the best way, instead of wearing pants or a skirt, the best way to dress is covering yourself in belts. And you know what? You do you. Putting your transgressions aside for that, let's celebrate the birth of a summoner. No, even better. It's time to celebrate the birth of the game's, like, biggest voice line meme that isn't from later, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. Still can't talk to him. Well, no, it's it's after this, I guess. What? Uh, ah, ow! Wait till you see this. I can't see anything. Ready. Hey, it's okay. that music from the loading screen. Every time I hear this, I just think of the song Chocobo Robo Voice by Legendary Frog. Because it starts off with this. I'd never seen anything like it in my life. Sure, it was a little scary, but still, I could feel a strange kind of gentleness coming from it. And this is... The Faith has entrusted you with a new Aeon, Valifor. Um, I've decided for this Let's Play, I'm not going to be keeping the standard names. Uh, Valifor is... Uh, Valifor has some meaning for me. Um, aside from the fact that it's like the Aeon that I used the most when I was younger, uh, it represents for our new summoner, summoner here, um, hope. It represents a, uh, a way to, to battle the darkness. It, it re represents the start of a journey. And, um, I always try to give the name to something that's special for me, that, uh, or someone special that always, um, represented the, the start of my journey, at least here on YouTube, and, um, fight, you know, the, the fight against the darkness, the fight against, uh, you know, all of the terrible things are going on and and uh, away away through so I I name I name my Valifor's meta and we're gonna we're gonna go with that I remember that night we talked for the first time I didn't know it then thanks Carl, but after that. that night everything changed for everyone for me. Let me introduce you to the team. This guy here wants into the tournament so bad, I let him on the team. His memory's a little fuzzy, so don't mind him if he says anything odd. Come on, say hi. 
Hello. Uh, hi guys. So what's our goal? To do our best. <laughs> nope, we got a new goal now. Our new goal is victory. To Gasp. win every match, defeat every opposing team. What's wrong with your arms? To bring sir. the Crystal Cup back to our island. That's all we need to do to win. Easy, yeah? <laughs> victory. 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 Victory.